Good morning, boys and girls. This is our 14th session. Uh, and for all you drummers, timpani players, xylophone uh, extraordinaires, <laughs> horn enthusiasts, uh, session number 14. And what I want to get at, we've been talking a lot about how to voice for five part, four and five part, passing chords. Now I want to move on to something, and we might revisit that, uh, we probably will revisit that uh, at another time, but I just want to move on to something new and different. Um, so you've written your chart out, you've conceptualized, you got it all together, and now you need to write your parts out uh, for the players. Um, <clears throat> So the first thing I want to talk about is you need to transpose your players, I mean your <laughs> your your parts for depending on the instrument that they are. So let's start with trumpet. Uh, let's start with two horns. Let's say we have a trumpet and tenor sax. Okay, so the trumpet is up a whole step. So if we were to write our trumpet in the key of C, um, that's no accidentals. What's a whole step up from C? Is D. So if the if our concert pitch is in C, then we write our trumpet in D, which is two sharps. Okay. Now what that's going to do is if the if the song is in C and you write your part, transpose part out in D, up a whole step, and you put your accidentals in like this. That is going to take care of a lot of of a lot of it, uh, because what's going to happen? Let's say on the concert version that you wrote, let's say the note is is E. What's a whole step up from E? F sharp. So if you didn't write your accidentals in, you would be having to put them. But since they're already there, and on the reverse, if if there's any spot in your on your concert chart score where you have an accidental, there's going to be one even though. So let's say that you have, let's say your melody is <clears throat> E and it went down to a D flat to a C, okay? Uh, and you did like a, uh, anyway, a whole step up from D flat is E flat, right? Or D sharp. So since we're so since we're looking at sharps, a D sharp, there is no D sharp. This is C sharp and F sharp. We're going to have a sharp there, okay? Or let's say just to make it easier to look at, let's say that we had C sharp, and then we went to a C natural. So for that C sharp, it'd be a D sharp. So we have an accidental here. We're going to have one there, okay? So that's how you do that. So it's up a whole step. Now, uh, we started writing for two horns, trumpet, and tenor sax. Uh, there's a lot of information online about this that you can refer to, uh, but your tenor saxes are up a ninth. So that means that if you wrote uh, your concert pitch for tenor, let's say you wrote an F, they're going to be up a ninth. So it would be up to the F and a whole step. So they're going to be playing a G. So if you want to hear F above middle C, here's middle C, F above middle C, middle C, F above middle C, that's the note that you want to hear, you got to write a G. So with the trumpet, if you want to hear an F, you write it here because it's only up a whole step. But for tenor sax, it's a ninth. Okay, alto sax is up a sixth. Uh, Barry Sax is up a 13th, and we can get into that later. But when you're writing, um, one of the things that, to consider, and the chart's not finished, because if you don't do any of this, the trumpet players are going to go, and the horn players are going to go, how do you want me to play this note? So let's, let's, look at a, let's look at when we write a quarter note. I want to get into articulations a little bit. Um, so if you write, let's say we write, Let's say we write, um, oh, I don't know. Okay. Oh, the egg timer. 
<laughs> um, let's okay. So that's ba ba da ba ba. Okay, is it ba da 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 da? Is it this? Do we do this? Put a legato, and we, if we do that, that means it's all you know ba da 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 da. da you know that that kind of. Uh, they're all kind of. You could do one just ba da da da. They're long, okay. They're legato. Uh, the other way we can do that is if you put a line over it, that means the quarter note is held for its whole value. Okay, so it's ba, and then if you put a dot over it, that means it's short. So what happened if we put, okay, those are short, this is long. So this would go ba da 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 da. Okay, so um, another, let me see. If we go, here's a typical. You see this all the time. Tied it over to a half. Ba da da. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ba da da. So typically in a jazz phrasing, you would hear that. Ba da da. So you would want to make this quarter note here short. So it's ba da da. Okay? Now, <clears throat> if you want it accented, let's move up here now. I'm going to have green fingers at the end of the day. Um, so let's say that you had um, you had a rest, okay, quarter note rest, and you had a whole in a quarter note, and you did a teepee. That would be bop, accented, okay. It would be accented, uh, and then you could go like this, tied over to a half. And if you went like that, it's accented. So it's one bop, one bop, ba, two, three, four, one bop, ba. You know, you put a little on it there. Okay. So quarter notes can be, and the quarter notes are really one to watch out for. Uh, typically, eighth notes uh, followed by a rest are always short. Uh, but quarter notes can be long and short. It's a lot easier. The less that you write down for somebody, the better. I mean, you could write an eighth note and follow it by a rest, and then it would be short. But I typically, it's, now it's getting, it's hard to see what we're doing here. But um, quarter notes can be long or short. A lot of times in jazz and things like that, even in rock and roll, a lot of times they're short. If you have it, let's say you have it on the de on on, uh, on uh, beat two of the bar, three, four, one, bop, a one, bop, three, four, a one, bop. You're not gonna have one, bop, a one, ah, uh, three, four. You know, it's gonna got a rock, so one, bop. So you would put that in that scenario. I would do, I would put the TP over, okay. And these are all in the ebook. You can look them up on uh, on the website, or I'll send you the ebook. Uh, we're going to get into more. There's more articulations uh, to get through crescendos and things like that. So we're going to continue on, on that course in the next uh, tutorial. So thanks for stopping by. It's Fred at fredstickleymusic.com. Here's the email address. Shoot me an email. Any questions, any comments you want to add to the conversation, would love to hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.